Hi everyone, I am Matteo Collina and today I'm here to talk to you about GraphQL. This is the second video of a series uh, where the in the first one we have covered the uh, introduc an introduction of GraphQL and of the work that we have done there and uh, in this second video we are going to cover uh, the uh, nested query problem and the how now to solve the one plus n issue that you might see uh, when developing GraphQL systems. So um, let's get started. Oh, before that, please remember to follow me uh, on Twitter. I'm at Matteo Colina, so check out. I tweet about a lot of bunch of stuff, uh, mainly Node.js related. So hey, uh, yeah, a little bit of self-promotion. So uh, in this video, I'm going to use Fastify for my demos. Fastify is a web framework that I built with a bunch of friends. Uh, starting three years ago now it's a community that has been grown to 10 people of maintainers that has grown to 10 people and we are almost shipping v3 so well anyway uh, check it out it's uh, it's a lot of fun uh, we are also going to use the graphql adapter it's called fastify-gql that you can install it on npm it's pretty great how does this work well as we've seen in the previous video, we define our schema, we define our resolver, and then we use it. And it just works. So pretty, pretty neat. Now let's go and talk about the nested query problem. Uh, normally, when you develop a type with multiple resolvers, uh, you, you specify it, you, you have nested uh, objects. So you, in this case, we have dogs and we have owner, and those are two different types right and uh, those two different types are connected now if you are modeling this using a relational database or a non a non relational database even you might want to represent this data on uh, multiple uh, tables or multiple collection or on different ways the two objects might not be nested in each other not stored in the same like block so when you go and fetch all your dogs, you might not have all the owner uh, information. And so with, what happens is that if you specify the owner as a resolver of your object, uh, of your dog, then you will get that you do a first query to get all the dogs, and then n queries, so the, the owner resolves this called n times, each one for, for each one of the dogs. Let's see how this, it's, uh, how this is implemented. So... If we go, this is a simple implementation, and if we go in here, we can see that we have, it's, this is the basic example, and we have our schema, which a human, a dog, and a query, and we have the, uh, the dog type as a resolver for human. And we actually go and do db.owner dog name. Um, Pretty neat. In fact, if you go in here, you will see that it's uh, uh, whenever we are doing the uh, whenever we are uh, oh we can see how it's working uh, because it's uh, uh, we can actually run our, run the code. So we can do our dogs query, and we got the name of the dogs. It's working as as expected, right? But we have also the owner. And if we go and look at the at the at the logs, we can see that it's getting all the dogs. Now, let's see what happens when we add the owner with a name. We get the data that we expect to. But here you will see that getting owner is called three times. And if you look at our, um, our resolver is in fact being called three times. It's this log line. So we are actually accessing, accessing our database three different times. <laughs> this it's a problem right because the moment we start doing this in a very complex system this can perform pretty badly very quickly so how can we change this well this is normally this is called as a as the one plus n query problem and is one of the things that you want to desperately want to avoid in um, uh, when developing a distributed system or even normal web apps so, uh, in fact, this can actually get even worse than that in GraphQL very quickly because let's see that instead of just having owner, we also have a nested property, owner has a nested property called address that is stored, for example, in yet another table on a relational database. 
Now, what you will you do? It, your system will do a one query, then n queries, then m queries. Wow, a lot of queries. Let's see how it all works. So uh, let's go back in our code, and this is we can go and look at the nested example, and you see that the human type has gained an address, and we have now added another um, resolver for for the human. Ah. This is a problem, right? You see where I'm going. Because the moment when I start, I'm starting to use this, it's, and I need to change to nested. Now, what I can do is I can type address and I can type city. It all will work fine again. However, as you can see in my logs, it's doing a lot of query for one single GraphQL query. It's just the database one, one for the dogs, three times for the owner, and three times for the address. Seven, seven, uh, seven, I can't count with my fingers, seven times. Whoa, it's too many, really. So, in fact, we can generalize this. In this case, it's one plus n times m, depending on how many they are. Uh, well, it can even be worse because the, 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 the query can be generalized as 1 plus n d minus 1, which is the depth. So if you look at our, our query, if you look at our query, we had three levels, 1, 2, and 3. And uh, we had three elements, so it's d is 3 minus 1, 2. I don't know. So... This is how these type of things are uh, are computed and done. So it's not really a good, good, um, a good. It's not a good problem to have, or maybe it is because maybe there is a solution. Well, yes, there is a solution. The data loader pattern it's enable you to solve the one plus n query problem in GraphQL. So um, in fact, you can. It can, the data loader help you by coalescing every query in this, that happens in the same tick into a bulk query. It also adds a little bit of a per request cache that you can tap into. Um, however, it's not super easy to set up and use, but we'll get to that in a moment. This is a URL, and this is an example how to use it. Maybe not super clear. We'll see that its impact in a second. So if you if you go into if you if we go into the code we have these data loaders. Now in order to use this we need to create a data loader for each of um, for each of our requests. So when a request comes in we need to create a new data loader so that it will coalesce all the queries for our docs. And uh, and then we need to access this in our resolvers so that we can actually ask the data loader to get our data. Well. That's not super nice. However, let's see how it works, because maybe it works very well. So I'm going back to my logs, and then I am actually going back in here, and then I'm printing data loaders, data loader. And let's run this. Still working the same, still working as expected, but now you can see that I'm actually doing only doing three things, three queries. Pretty neat. Pretty, pretty neat. I love it, to be honest. So, um, it's actually pretty nice. So, I am... It's really good. Now, the next one up is, is, very, is very interesting because uh, it's the GQL a fastify gql loaders so um, in fact the fastify gql support its own uh, um, support its own implementation of the data loader and uh, of the data loader pattern which is not exactly based on the same thing of the data loader library from the graphql runtime but it implements the same concept and in fact, it's actually very simple because you can use it by uh, defining uh, loaders and passing down the loaders down. So it's automatically managed by 
uh, it's automatically done internally and you need, don't need to define it you don't need to wire it up manually it's all done for you so just define this and you got your queries and then you can do some your your query that you want to do pretty neat um, let's see how it's done and how it's working but as you can imagine we have already demoed this so loaders and we can run it and again in our code you will see that it does the same three queries as before you can see this in here and this, this code is basically defining a loader for the owner and a loader for the address property and that's it really pretty neat so I'm not doing anything special here so um, uh, I just wanted to finish uh, to finish this talk uh, by by telling that it's the nested query problem is actually very very important in GraphQL and it's one of those things where you uh, need to use this pattern you need to use the data loader pattern you can you cannot avoid it so this is the amount of complexity that you need to take into account because if you're using this to develop a microservice system for example um, you need to make search to make sure that when you are joining up uh, two microservices two type of data together you are actually able to do bulk queries to from the database to actually load an array of data at the same time otherwise if you need to eat to, to eat that data and load that data manually it's going to be really really problematic and slow so take that into account um, I just wanted to to finish by saying uh, thank you for your time uh, please follow me on Twitter at Matteo Collina uh, you can also reach out to me via email asking me any question you want uh, finally uh, I work for a company called Nearform we are a professional services company we are based in Ireland and we can help you with uh, uh, your um, any of your JavaScript problems and both on the server side on the node side we can also do a bunch of other stuff that uh, are uh, very interesting so uh, please check us out at uh, uh, nearform dot uh, at nearform dot com and uh, thank you all and uh, see you next time bye